Hello everyone and welcome back to Factory Town for yet another visit. I really can't get enough of this game if you haven't noticed already. Now, for those of you who are, who are new to the channel or just haven't seen my previous Factory Town coverage, Factory Town is um, in effect a combination between uh, kind of a colony management game and a factory automization game. Uh, I hazard to make comparisons to the obvious things like Factory and things like that because really the focus is on, on something different. You are ultimately trying to automate and produce end products in a larger quantity as you can, but the reason why you're doing it is a little bit different in this, in that you are ultimately trying to harvest the resource of happiness from your people. That sounds really grim, actually, putting it that way, but basically you're making items and food and, and magical books and things like that because it makes your people happy, and their happiness, in turn, makes productivity improve across your town. It kind of all feeds into each other in kind of a circle of life sort of way, but it is a very, very lighthearted, very easy to get into game, and I'm really, really pleased to be returning to it for Season 3. Now, those of you who are familiar with my previous coverage, Season 1, 2, and 2.5, because Seasons 2 came to a rather abrupt and untimely end when I I, uh, when my computer broke and I lost access to the save file. The biggest change since then is, or since then rather, is the introduction of trains. Not fake trains, which are basically wagons that inexplicably can move, but actual locomotives that require fuel and water to, to be able to work. And the trickle-down changes that that has introduced to previously uh, existing systems, like the aforementioned wagons, which are now subject to gravity. So they can't just roll up a ramp. They need to be pulled up a ramp. Now, you can either do that with a locomotive, or you can use the upgraded steam power to have uh, rotational energy kind of uh, pull them up the ramp kind of the the way you might see with a uh, with a roller coaster for example we've also got uh, liquid pumps and, and fluid tubes that can now not just carry water but that's probably the, the chief use that we'll see early on but also things like potions and the likes so there, there are quite a lot of changes to the logistics layer and especially around the mid game and I'm really really looking forward to being able to check this out with you but as always it is much easier to show rather than describe, so let's jump into a new game. And here we go, a fresh default world for us to play with. And it looks like it's actually generated quite a nice little world for us, if uh, truth be told. We've got quite a good spread of resources right around the starting base. So this should uh, go quite smoothly early on, at least. Now then, we are going to be playing through the tutorials, but uh, as I have played this game so many times now, and I'm quite familiar with it, there is the risk that I might uh, gloss over certain topics. If that happens, then please, by all means, do uh, do let me know in the comments down below by you know questions are warmly welcomed and I'll do my best to answer them however if you are completely uh, unfamiliar with the game then I do strongly recommend you check out my earlier season uh, series as I uh, highly tutorialize the first series in particular and just generally go over some of the uh, intermittent changes in seasons 2 and 2.5 but with this let's start off we need to gather some wood so we're going to go with my old favorite and that is uh, two people on wood, two people on stone to start building that up. Since the stone is a little bit further away, we'll have two people helping out with that, and that should uh, speed things along. Now, we need to build up to get 15 wood in total, but uh, I'm going to spend a little bit of wood on helping my people move around a bit. Now, this is going to slow some things down, but uh, overall, that should be a big help to our workforce going to and fro. The, these sort of paths, they're fairly uh, low tech. They just require one log each, and uh, there are much better paths later on that require stone, but we'll, we'll get to those uh, when we can. Now, while they're building up the uh, the logs there, we can have a proper look around. Oh, we've got some interesting terrain over there. The logistics in trying to deal with that will be, uh, be quite interesting indeed. We may well uh, find that uh, because carts can't just go up ramps, anymore. That, that's going to pose some uh, particular challenges. But I noticed that we've got a good industrial base over there. Lots of coal, lots of iron. In fact, we've got uh, a decent amount of stone, coal, and iron 
all over this section of the map. We've also got quite a few little spots of uh, grain. We've got a little bit of sugar there too, some herbs, uh, some cotton, early game cotton. That's very, very nice. I think we've got some tomatoes over here, some carrots. Okay, we've got quite a good spread of resources. Not seeing many fish though, which is a bit of a shame. No, oh, oh dear, we are huge. How did I even miss this? That's a massive amount of fish. So that should be nice and easy. But we've got our, our 15 logs. So let's see what's next on the list. Right, build a house. Now, one of the things that, uh, one of the pieces of feedback that I received from quite a few people on my recent community post where I was asking if they was interested in seeing another season of Factory Town was uh, a general support for the idea of just making pretty villages and not going the ultra efficient, you know, massive like apartment industrial complexes. Well, you will be very relieved to know that that was never my plan anyway. I mean, come on, this is one of my series. We all know that, that Alag is form before function. Function is there, don't get me wrong, it's on the priority list, probably up in the top five, but it is definitely behind form on that list of priorities. The priority hierarchy starts with form and then everything else comes next. So you don't need to worry about that. How we're going to go about building the villages though, I haven't decided yet. I am quite keen on the idea of having discrete little villages around the map with a specific function, like a little farming village, a little maybe uh, like woodworking or more, more industrial village, so on and so forth. But to start off, we can assume that these, uh, these first homes may be temporary or maybe they'll be historic buildings. And we'll only have a couple of them around. And I think this little uh, grain area here is probably one of the best ones for us to start with. So let's go ahead and start plonking down a couple of homes. Now, it only requires one, so we'll go with just what it asks for while we're following the tutorial. But usually I would probably have put down quite a few of those. All right, create workers. A house has increased your population limit by two, in fact, for the first house. And so we'll go ahead and build two workers. There we go. And next up, it wants us to start supplying the house. You'll notice the workers cost me five gold coins each. The house can generate coins. And, and this is pretty much how you generate all of your, your, account, uh, your, your wealth, is by delivering goods to houses. By and large, anything delivered from a marketplace, so food items, will generate yellow coins. Anything delivered as uh, general goods will generate red coins. Um, apothecary and sort of specialist goods will be blue. And finally, you've got your you know ultra end game stuff like magic and uh, some very gourmet foods, which will uh, deliver purple coins. But first and foremost, we're just going to grab some uh, some wheat. In fact, uh, I am going to go ahead and build a second house just to. To demonstrate something. Now, this worker there is going to very uh, quickly get to the point that this house is not going to be able to store any more wheat. Uh, they consume all of the, the goods, and this is true of everything. They use goods or eat goods, depending on what it is, at a certain rate, and we can very quickly saturate that. So, for example, these workers here will quickly uh, build up 10 um, grain in the storage and then we'll be able to put in more. But you'll notice that the workers are actually delivering to this house as well because the workers are smart enough to understand that I wasn't specifically telling them to take this grain from this patch and deliver to this house. I was saying grab some grain from nearby and deliver it to any house that needs grain. So uh, they'll take care of that and we can happily go ahead and place down the remaining houses if we so choose. And I think we shall so choose. Uh, we'll also make life a little bit easier for our haulers by adding in a little road there. And in fact, I'm going to tell you to grab from this one just so it's a little bit easier and you don't have to travel quite as far. And that should uh, help out things there. That's going to keep us uh, going with a, a, a healthy workforce for a little while now. Right, so the house has been supplied. Next up, lumber mills. Turns wood into planks, which you will need for many buildings. Th this is probably one of the, the most basic resources. As much as logs are a basic resource, and you will use them a little bit all the way through the game, planks are really where the buildings uh, come from, for the most part. So let's get that lumber mill set up. Now, uh, one of the things that that uh, will have changed from the last time I played the game is passive collection of water has changed quite significantly. It's now much slower because there are far more efficient means of getting water, namely steam pump, uh, sorry, steam powered um, water pumps and fluid pipes. Those will be the, the main way that we'll deliver water to most places. The wells and, and, and passive water, like bucketing it out, out of uh, a river, they are far, far less efficient now. But we're gonna go ahead and build our uh, lumber mill just about over here, and that's unlocked a bunch of little things for us there. 
perfect. Right, uh, one thing I didn't actually demonstrate, and I'll, I'll just go over how the this has changed rather than showcasing it. Though I, you know what, actually, no, I, I, I suppose I can do it. Let's uh, go ahead. Oh, I should have thought about this before I built all the houses, but there we go. We've got all of our workers down now. Traditionally, if you didn't have available workforce, you couldn't build a building. That has now changed, and uh, it is both an amazing change and also a trap, a massive trap. I am sure I'm going to get trapped by it, so this is me just calling it ahead of time. You can now place a building even if you don't have the workforce to run it. And all that will happen is there won't be any workers there. But this will allow us to plan uh, an industrial area, for example, before we've upgraded our houses to be able to accommodate the workforce needed to run that area. And this is going to be so, so good in so many ways, because that was always a bit of a potch. If you didn't have enough people, then you'd have to go around, fix that first, and then you could start, uh, or rather continue building up an industrial uh, complex and, and, and chain of workers. Uh, however... Because I've gotten used to the fact that if I try to build something and I don't have someone to run it, I can't build it, I can almost guarantee that at some point I'm going to try and build a building and uh, it's going to let me and I'm just going to assume that that's staffed and go on my merry way doing other things and only come back like half an hour later and be like, why have I got no planks? Oh my god, really? And uh, yeah, uh, so uh, I apologize in advance if that makes anyone's brain itch. Uh, trust me, it's going to make mine itch as well. Right, we want to select the planks recipe and start delivering some uh, planks to this building. Now, don't worry about that lumber mill. We're going to need more than one. So I'm just going to leave it over there until we need it. Uh, right, so planks are being delivered. Now we need to bring the planks from the uh, lumber mill to our base and to that end we're also going to add in another row just to uh, make my workers lives a little bit easier overall there we go because we don't just want to make the people in the houses happy we want to make the workers happy as well happy workers are productive workers there we go and uh, i'm very finicky so <laughs> i'm just going to place down all those roads there we are Right, upgrading houses. Houses can be upgraded further to increase population limits. Now, we are outproducing out our ability to move these resources around. So let's get uh, the remaining workers helping out there. We have two uh, people bringing in uh, logs. That's great because two logs makes a plank, and then they've got a bit of time to make the plank. We are going to now outstore the uh, production of the planks, but that's fine. We'll, we'll move people around as needed. Right, so upgrading houses. If we head over here for 20 coins, we've now got 53, and five planks, we can upgrade a house. This is going to give us another two people to work, but will also allow this house to consume more items. You'll notice the difference here. If we have a look at saleable, we've got uh, four different types of uh, food product. You've got grains, fruits, um, vegetables and some dairy products and we've also got a, a very limited amount of general goods that we can sell to a level one house but a level two house can accept far far more we've got the grains fruits vegetables dairy um, poultry meats fish um, more dairy, so butter in, in addition to milk. We've got fruit juices. Uh, we've got uh, a wider selection of general goods. We've also got some apothecary and, and uh, medicine as well that we can sell there. So upgrading the houses also uh, gives you uh, the ability to make more and different types of, of coins by being able to sell a much wider variety of more valuable goods to that house. But uh, for now, the main focus is on getting more workers ultimately. Right, we can now upgrade our base as well, We can, which will increase the amount of houses that we can place. Uh, we're going to have to wait on a little bit of coins to come in for that, my bad. I uh, got a little bit ahead of myself there, but that's fine. It shouldn't take us too long. In fact, it'll be done in just about now. And there we go. The last bit has been delivered. The last bit of grain has uh, been sold, and we're up to 21 now, actually. Okay, so let's upgrade our base. Bop, bop. There we are. Four new houses, a green mill, a food market, and a workshop. All ready to be built. Right, build the food market. Markets sell items automatically to nearby houses, making it much easier to earn. Uh, now, the way that markets work uh, has changed since the very first season, where markets had like an AOE and any house within that area, and uh, it was basically could stack infinitely uh, along the vertical. Uh, that has gone, and uh, you now have to be connected to a road which is connected to the market, which I think is a much, much better system overall. However, let's uh, make sure that we've got plenty of room for this market 
to to grow out and uh, to service these uh, potentially historic buildings. This is this is uh, this is going to be the old town district, I guess you could say. Now we're going to want our peeps to be delivering grain from the grain to the market now, and the market will automatically sell to any of the towns that are connected to the road network. You notice the, the road network the market is connected to is highlighted there for us and also just the buildings around the market. If, it, if they're that close, you can easily get it to them. But other than that, you're going to need the roads specifically. And there we go. Uh, we now need to build a grain mill. Grain mills turn grain into flour, which can be sold for a higher price and is an ingredient in other goods. If we have a look in here at the prices, you'll see that grain, which is produced at the grain mill, uh, sorry, grain, sorry, uh, which is produced, you know, from the ground, uh, sells for one, but flour, which is produced from three grain, sells for four. So you're actually making a bit of profit there. Granted, you do need a, uh, a production chain in order to make it. So, you know, there are pros and there are cons. Uh, but uh, considering we're, we're set up fairly close by, let's go ahead and build this grain mill right about here if we uh, so choose, or we can have it offset just a little bit so that the the uh, grain can be more efficiently or rather the flour can be more efficiently moved around uh, in fact we'll uh, offset it all the way back there and you'll see why in just a moment now you can produce flour and sell it to the market for a lot of coins so instead of delivering the grain directly we're going to deliver it down to the grain mill uh, first though we're going to bring out a little path for our peeps to use to get there are meeples if you prefer there we are and that uh, should be nice and easy we'll set up the the recipe we want flour made here please and thank you now again that takes three grain four seconds and produces one flour we've got plenty of uh, meeples that we can use here so we'll just go ahead another one to deliver a little bit more flour uh, grain and then we'll finally have the flour delivered direct to the marketplace and there we go and someone should uh, give us four gold coins marvelous now we can improve that even further the next step is to build a workshop but before we get there i'm going to uh, make use of the shoots that we have been given access to it's one of the very first kind of automation buildings that we can have now only a few items can move along a shoot flower and most raw uh, materials are amongst them so now i can have all of my uh, meeples delivering the grain to the grain mill and the grain mill will deliver the flour automatically to the market and that uh, makes things much much better for us but it doesn't end there we can make things a little bit better besides now for this one we're going to want to build out a little bit of a uh, an access route and we're going to want to drag a chute all the way down to the mill now i'm going to have to get rid of some of these uh, items along the way because the the chute can't be built there but uh now i'm going to want my uh, meeples actually to hold tight for just a second because as i mentioned uh grain is a natural resource and as such can roll as many of them can so we're just going to deliver the grain to the chute there we go and the meeples should be able to get that on the way and that whole process is now significantly more efficient like a really really efficient compared to uh, before uh, we're gonna have uh, one of the meeples in fact head down there because we don't need that many of you working grain in fact you'll get in each other's way more than anything else but that has uh, massively improved the speed by which we can get uh, get all of that delivered and in fact we can do a little bit of something similar down here though it's not strictly necessary logs can roll down shoots uh so we could have that working there stone can definitely roll down shoots and in fact that would probably be a bit of a better option than having our, our meeples have to walk all the way however we are going to make it a little bit uh, more efficient besides now the way that i'm going to do that is i'm going to introduce a little bit of a uh, of a ramp the shoots are functionally they have uh, they're functionally frictionless for all intents and purposes so once something starts moving a little bit faster down them it continues at that speed forever so we're just going to draw that across there i would like you to hang tight over here and you can do the same let's get you both down here now i want next to have a uh, little oh we don't have half stairs oh that's a bit of a shame we're going to unlock that uh, a little bit later but we will instead then build this there we go and we can add 
a little bit of a path there so they can now walk on this. Otherwise, the they can't traverse the uh, the um, the scaffolding like that. But there we are, and it speeds up as it goes down the ramp and just continues on its merry way into the uh, into the base. And there we are. We'll get you helping out as well. There we go. That'll be a little bit faster for us overall. Perfect. I think that's marvellous. Now, we could do something similar down here as well if we really wanted to and have uh, the logs over here um, delivered to the base directly. And, and perhaps there is uh, some want for that. Let's uh, do something similar. Though we are now effectively making it uh, impossible for our meeples to cross the uh, the chutes. They can't walk over the chutes. So later on, we may need to add in some, uh, some uh, bridges and the likes. The planks cannot roll. Most refined goods cannot roll down a chute, with a few very rare exceptions. So uh, we're not even going to worry about that one too much right now. But you can see here, starting to back up a little bit. That's uh, very good news for us indeed. Okay, so time to move on to the workshop. All right, then let's uh, see about getting this one built. There we go. Now, where are we going to place it? Well, since we're probably going to be making use of uh, planks, we'll go ahead and place this one down right there. There we go. We now have the uh, the half stairs unlocked. We've also got the wagon unlocked as well. Wagons can move four items at a time, but they cannot harvest items. They also move much faster on stone roads. Produce four wood wheels at your workshop. Bring the wood wheels to your base so that they are in the shared inventory. The base's inventory we can build from is basically global. Not all inventories work that way. For example, a silo. If there's something in a silo, well, it's just in the silo. It can be taken out of the silo and put somewhere else, but you can't build with it. Um, so the base's inventory is kind of special in that regard. Barns share a very similar quality to it. Uh, but we want to build some wagons. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up a wooden wheels as the uh, product that we want. And next, I'm going to want you to stop delivering the uh, planks over to the base. In fact, uh, I kind of want uh, both of you to deliver it here instead. There we go. Now, one of you is going to still try to deliver them to the base. And ultimately, I do kind of want that. Uh, we don't necessarily want... Uh, all of our planks to be delivered to uh, to make wagon wheels, but for the time being, we'll just set this one up until we've got some wagons, and then we can play around with that a little bit differently. There we go. So uh, it's going to be a little bit easier for them to deliver that over there. Perhaps we could set up a, a lumber mill nearby just to deliver planks to the base, and that may well be be worth it. I'm going to be honest. Uh, do we have room for that? We may, in fact, have a little bit of room to just set up something like that down here. So let's grab the lumber mill and see if we can nestle it. Yes, we can. Marvellous. Okay, well, given that then, we don't need to worry over much of the planks not being uh, delivered as they should. Instead, we'll get a couple of people delivering wood to this little lumber mill here, which will also be working on some planks for us. There we are. And of course, need to be sure that we add a worker. Now I've got one more worker left that I can place and we're going to place you here to bring those planks along. There we go. Everything should continue to be stored. Now we've got nine wooden wheels in the storage. Now we're going to need a little bit more uh, population to be able to build a wagon. It requires one population, but it can it can do the work when it comes to hauling of four workers. So it is a better uh, option in that regard, at least between two buildings. It can't mine anything, so you don't want to uh, don't want to saturate it in that regard. Uh, but you'll notice that uh, we have completely stocked up all of the stone and all of the wood that we can store because the base will only ever store one instance of an item, uh, as I believe I've, I've mentioned uh, earlier. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and upgrade one of our houses. There we go. That gives us a little bit more to play with and allows us to build the wagon that we wanted. There we are complete. Right, we've got to upgrade the base again. Thankfully, we have all of the materials there, and pop! We can now build four more houses and new uh, schools can be unlocked. We've also got the general store, and paper has been unlocked as well. As the... Uh, the inventory maximum, the stack size, has increased in the base as well, which is a, an added benefit there. All right, now for the planks, I'm going to say that you guys don't need to worry about it, and I'll have a wagon taking care of that. You're probably never going to be uh, at a point where we need uh, a wagon moving that much, but uh, we'll, we'll set it up all the same. The only thing I really want uh, you guys working on uh, specifically 
is stuff that requires harvesting because that's where you excel and the wagons do not. So uh, if you get onto that for me, that would be grand. There we are. We'll just allow those to keep going. The the wagon is also a little bit faster, I believe. I could be wrong about that, though. Uh, in fact, let's uh, grab you. You're also going to help out. Damn it. Selected the wrong thing. You can grab uh, lumber from over there and help out in here. And we'll build another wagon. It's not exactly needed for moving the wagon wheels, but we'll make it anyway. There we go. Perfect. Right. Have we got someone moving? Pl uh, we do have someone moving planks. Okay, well, that's fine then. Right, upgraded the base. What's next on the menu? A general store. General stores can store automa uh, can sorry automatically sell planks, stone, bricks, and other utility items, just like food markets can sell food-related items. So uh, we're going to want that near our old town district as well uh, as uh, maybe one or two more houses. I think let's uh, pop. A house here and possibly a house here. They're going to be built up automatically on some scaffolding because the terrain doesn't allow them to be placed flat. So uh, that's quite useful. And we'll go ahead and immediately upgrade these as well. You'll notice every time we upgrade these, the food market upgrades a little bit. Uh, and that's just showing us that it is linked to more and more and more houses. We're currently storing the maximum amount of uh, flour that we can have and each house is starting to stockpile a little bit of flour as well which is actually uh, pretty cool and the flour does uh, offer much better returns than the grain itself so we'll just allow our, our peeps there to turn all of that grain into flour where they can now we need to build the general store and i think perhaps the general store being over here would be a good idea but maybe we'll have it down uh, along the road a little bit somewhere there perhaps and we'll hook this one up with a road just connecting to all of our homes as well. There we are. Right, so as you can see, all of those homes are now covered, and that leaves us a little bit more space to add some homes uh, later on as well. Now, the markets and the general stores don't actually have anyone working there. It's largely an automatic process. Now, earn red coins. Many items sold at the general store will produce red coins, which are a speciality, uh, sorry, a special currency used for upgrades, research, and advanced recipes. Now, if we have a look in here, what do you want? You will happily accept planks. You'll also, interestingly enough, accept straight up cotton. We have cotton over there. Or is it wool that you'll accept? Let's have a look here. Ah, uh, it's wool. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. That would have been very easy for us to uh, take care of. But given that we do have uh, planks being produced in a reasonably large quantity, uh, but you'll also, I believe, accept... Uh, will you accept wagon wheels, perhaps? No, you won't. That, that's a bit of a shame. Uh, wagon wheels are a, a resource that the, we used to be able to sell, at the very least. It doesn't look like the general store sells wagon wheels anymore. That is a very interesting change, because they were a very, uh, very good uh, early game way of getting uh, red coins, because you get so, so many of them. But uh, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that anymore. All right, well, given that, I'm going to use a wagon from the base to deliver some of our... Uh, planks to the general store. Now, this is a fairly long route for them to take, but it shouldn't be too much for a wagon to handle. Let's go ahead and build one of you. There we are. Now, what is our production of planks? I would say that our plank production is probably sufficient to supply uh, taking a, a couple out there every now and then. This is uh, for, it only shows one instance of the object in the wagon that used to show all four but that was uh that was kind of in an inefficient uh method of doing it uh programmatically that is it, it required more resources where it really wasn't giving us any any new information so from now on wagons only show one instance of whatever they're carrying it's also a little bit easier to uh, make that out as a, as a direct result of that now it's going to take us 12 seconds to make four planks does this whole trip take more than 12 seconds. I'm gonna say probably, uh, and, and hope for the best. Uh, we've got 138. I guess uh, the easiest way is to just watch whether that number rises over time. Now, we've earned some red coins. Uh, now we need to build a school. Very well. Oh, where are you off to now? You decided to take another route? Why? Oh, you scoundrel. I made this beautiful path for you and every I spent wood on that. You scallywag. My lord. Oh, well. I'm sure we'll, uh, I'll learn to forgive you in time. Uh, right, so a school will let you research many new buildings and useful technologies and is incredibly, incredibly important to the progress of the game. 
Now we're going to want to set this up reasonably close to uh, some sort of uh, lumber yard uh, simply because it is going to require paper which is going to be made from wood pulp. Now the school itself doesn't need access to water but uh, any lumber yard that wants to make uh, paper is going to need it. Uh, we'll go ahead and set up the school possibly around here. I think this should be a good enough uh, spot for it. Let's pop that there. And in fact, I'm going to move the other buildings back by one tile each, though uh, that will first require that I remove these little paths there. There we go. And uh, let's get you back by one and everything then should be. Uh oh, did I just did I? I think I may have accidentally deleted someone. Well, wow. Uh, hopefully it wasn't painful. I imagine it was painful. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it, I promise. All right, there we go. So the school has been set up. And for this, we're going to need a lumber mill which produces paper. The recipe requires water. Now, we can either build another lumber mill which has access to water, or we can bucket the water across. But uh, generally speaking, it is going to be more useful to have the lumber mill have access to water itself. And we can do that just by uh, building this up there and it'll tell us how many tiles it has access to. Let's go ahead and plonk you down. Now, this will mean that we can uh, bring in water at one per second. I think each tile that it has access to gives some fraction of a second to the speed that it can, it can take water in. But uh, even at a water intake speed of one unit per second, that is drastically lower than it used to be. Uh, let's go ahead and set up paper. Now we're going to need one every four seconds, so we're going to be fine uh, with it in this case. There we go. Uh, in fact, we've got 110%. Is that... Uh, oh, it's happiness. We've actually crested the point where we're gaining the, ha the production bonus. That's fantastic. Very, very happy with this. Very happy indeed. Uh, right, so we're going to have the ability to get some paper being made here. Now, once again, we're going to want our peeps delivering some wood but we're gonna use shoots here to expedite the process how much uh, lumber does it need two every four seconds well two meeples are easily going to be able to take care of this one for me there we go if you're wondering where the term meeple comes from it's uh, largely used in board games it means mini people uh, there we are. So, so any any board game that has uh, some sort of like a little wooden die to represent uh, to represent uh, your your population, uh, quite often they're referred to as meeples. And I've always found the term incredibly endearing. There we go. We've we'll got you two delivering direct to that shoot. And this way we can move the shoots back over time as the need presents itself. There we are. And we'll uh, continue to build up these paths so our meeples can move around a little bit easier. There you go. Uh, okay, well, maybe we want a little bit more path uh, pathing around here as well, just so that uh, we can get back down here as well, I suppose. Uh, yeah, we've easily got enough uh, wood to, to handle that. There we are. So this should be uh, stocking up with paper for us. Fantastic. So that means we now want another wagon. Let's get you on the road. There we go. And deliver the paper to the school. There we go. Right, the school will need lots of paper and coins to complete research. Select school, hit the select recipe. Now, right now, everything that we're doing is non-sustainable. We are consuming all of the grain. Once that is uh, uh, fully harvested, you'll notice each grain actually has an amount of resources that are there. It's gone forever. Same with trees, same with cotton, same with everything around. But you can build and, and uh, manage the resources in a sustainable way. For things like minerals, like stones, uh, iron, coal, it's much, much later in the game that you can make that sustainable, but wood and uh, generally uh, all of the crops, that can be uh, that can be uh, managed in a very sustainable way very early on. Some of the earliest things that you'll be working towards. And to that end, we're going to learn farming as the first item. Now that requires uh, writing supplies and each piece of paper is equivalent to one and two coins per action. It requires a total of 50, so 100 coins in total, and 50 pieces of paper, which in turn is 100 logs and uh, and 50 buckets of water. But we're gathering the water passively. The, the rivers will never drain, as far as I'm aware. I hope not. Uh, but uh, uh, quite a lot of the, the items early on are fairly easy to get. Much later on, you're going to be dealing with incredibly high like uh, writing supplies requirements. At that point, you're really going to be wanting 
books rather than paper at the very bare minimum. You're probably going to want enchanted books of some sort. And the coin cost becomes extremely high later on. Like the Omni Temple construction requires 100 purple coins per uh, item, and I'm not even sure how many it requires. It's probably like 100 or, or more uh, instances of that. So it, it can take quite some time to get all of that done. Noticing that uh, meeples are starting to back up a little bit in certain areas, but that's fine. Um, maybe I will take you from there and you can help out over here instead. Uh, I would actually prefer it if you uh, delivered to the shoot though. So let's just make sure that that's happening. There we are. And this way we can keep a, keep an eye on, on where we're, um, we've got ample production, for example. Now you are currently delivering planks across and Honestly, I'd rather have this moved across a little bit just to uh, make this whole area a little bit uh, easier for us to see. Now, one of the things with any kind of uh, resource, when you move or delete a building, well, when you move it, it doesn't get consumed, but when you delete a building, such as the wooden paths, that resource gets returned to the base. The only time it can't is if the base can't store it. So generally speaking, Using the base as the storage area for building resources is not uh, not well advised, uh, let's say. Barns are much better for this because like the base, barns have a shared kind of global inventory so you can build from barns. But unlike the base, when you delete something, the resources never go back to a barn. They will always go back to the base. So I try to make a point of emptying the base wherever I can into a dedicated barn storage for that type of resource. That way, Right now, wood is not that much of a concern, and so losing one piece of log because I deleted a road and there was no room to store it in a barn, that's not an issue. You'll get the full cost of whatever you delete back, by the way. But later on, when you're dealing with um, like uh, metal conveyors or something like that, where those resources are at the end of a, of, of a whole production chain themselves, you don't really want to just be throwing those away willy-nilly. But there we are, we have unlocked the farm and I've got new research for the animal pasture. Raise happiness. Houses generate happiness for every different type of goods that they are provided with. As happiness goes up, your, to your town will earn production bonuses. Keep your town's happiness levels high for the best results. Provide a variety of goods to as many houses as possible. Try to reach a town happiness level of 25. That's actually uh, quite the goal there, I must confess. Uh, can we easily reach it? Uh, Possibly, uh, you know, I'm, I'm willing to, uh, I'm willing to try at the very least. Uh, right, I would like you to help out over here as well. In fact, at this point, I'm going to extend this little area out by one. As soon as someone isn't uh, stood there, come on, move, move, move. There we go. Ha! Now they are smart enough to uh, realize the end of the shoot has changed, and they will always try to deliver to the end of the shoot rather than uh, rather than the middle point or wherever you pointed at. That didn't used to be the case, and it used to be quite a frustration, if I'm perfectly honest, but that has now changed a fair old bit. Right then, we are not producing nearly as many planks as I would like, uh, largely because we're selling them, but we'll, we'll make do with that, I think. For the most part, we should be okay. Let's go ahead and get this wagon delivering the planks to, uh, to the, the base for now. We also want to be researching something else. So, of the things that we have, we could go for masonry, and that would give us access to uh, to stones, which we could then further sell. We could go for woodworking, which would allow us to create the barns, create boat building, fluid pipes, and forestry. Now, that one is an important one to go for. Masonry, though, I think is probably the next one we're going to go for, because soon the buildings are going to start requiring bricks, not just stone. So let's knock that one out early and uh, we should be able to to move forward with, it, with that then now in terms of our home's happiness we can solve this in a variety of ways ways right now we we're getting 12 happiness from six homes we could just add more homes we can add another six homes and that would bring us up to 24 which would be a lot easier then to complete our, our mission uh right now though let's have a quick look we could start delivering fruits we could start delivering um, fish, perhaps, as well. That would uh, be another one that we could uh, bring along. We can start delivering bricks as well as planks. That would definitely help. So uh, that will bring up the happiness a little bit more besides. Uh, I think we'll try and see if we can't... Uh, we've got sugar over there. Do any, do any of the houses accept just raw sugar? They don't. Okay, well, that's a bit of a shame. They will accept fish, though. Do any of them accept herbs? Uh, they may straight up accept herbs. They do, but farming herbs is not 
as useful uh straight away but we can we can definitely make that happen but we don't yet have a building that would allow us to deliver them as easily you'd need an apothecary for that so we'd have to have someone delivering the herbs door to door which is a little bit of a potch if i'm perfectly honest we've got some berries over there though that we could bring down we have got yeah we've got the fish down here and that's probably a, a nice easy one for us to go for so sure let's uh let's set up a little bit of a delivery now this is going to be very inefficient delivery uh, method right now oh there we go stonemason is done perfect well actually before we start moving the fish because it's so far away we're going to get woodworking going and hopefully we can get that one uh, set up uh, we'll go ahead and set up the delivery of stone bricks as well as uh, these stones and then peel some of those off for the general store i think that would actually be a, a good step right now while we're waiting for woodworking because the the distance from the nearest fish to the market is long enough that i would want to use wagons but wagons can't harvest so we'll uh, go another route for that let's uh, pop that one down there just to be uh, complete right so we are going to want a mason's a stone mason uh, we can place this more or less wherever we really want to around here and uh, this is good enough for me right now there we go we've unlocked stone roads and uh, stone scaffolding as well which is actually a big unlock for us let's go ahead and get some stone bricks on the go i'm going to want some more peeps helping out with this so uh, let's go ahead well we haven't actually got that many to help with we are gonna need to get some more more uh, people working once we've got bricks we can upgrade these houses a little bit further which will be particularly useful but uh, let's go ahead and place down maybe one or two more houses just over here and one is gonna need a uh, little scaffolding there and we'll build out a little bit of scaffolding here as well oh there we go the barn has been unlocked fantastic there we are and these two can both be upgraded further which should in time allow us to uh to take care of all of that now we're having to bring along the uh the wheat from a little bit further away which is not exactly the best route so we're gonna remove this entire path all the way down here because that's gonna radically uh, speed things up for us but we are going to need to build are shoots on the same level or higher shoots can't they can't uh anything rolling down a shoot the, the key word there is down it can't uh, uh, rise up i mean if they've got a, quite a bit of momentum then they can do a, it a little bit oh dear they're going the wrong way now aren't they okay well we'll have to set that one up in just a moment uh let's make a little rise here we can actually use the stairs which honestly look a little bit nicer there we are and have a little path there and then let's grab all of you let's uh, pop you down there please and thank you and then we'll have our chute heading down to the grain mill there we go you can carry on delivering all of the grain there and we'll uh, keep that moving forward right now then we've got a uh, storage medium we can have a crate down here we can now have barns but there's no particular reason to store fish in a barn because you're never going to need to build with it barns have an enormous storage capacity compared to crates but generally speaking you just don't need it and what i'm going to want is the, the fish here right up on the on the 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 shoreline here which is fantastic we can put that crate right there we're going to need um probably honestly just one person is easily going to be able to move enough fish back and forth into this crate that a wagon is not going to be able to move more than they can store before it gets back so that's uh, that's fine that's actually very useful for us let's have you delivering and of course we want a nicer path for you to use something along this line will work very nicely for us there we go ah can you not get up there oh it's possible that uh, usually people don't collide but it may be that on a stairs they do well that's uh, a bit of a pain oh can you reach there i wasn't aware that they'd be able to to reach up a half block oh well, in that case that makes everything a lot easier uh, there we go we'll uh, just keep you moving on then how much does uh, raw fish sell for only two but that's fine fish is uh, a, a self-regulating resource as long as you don't overfish you can 100 percent strip an area f um clean of all the fish that that live there and if you do well then you've lost your access to fish but uh generally speaking as long as you you fish responsibly that's never going to be a problem for you right now with that we are going to be able to pop down a wagon over here i would very much like these bricks delivered to the base as well 
as getting a couple more meeples to help out with uh, delivering stone to the mason. There we are. That'll, that'll help out quite a lot, in fact. And we'll just draw this out. There we go. Nice and tidy-like. Perfect. Now, delivering all the stone to the base, eventually it's going to build up. You notice that some of the grain got stored there because I deleted something that had grain in. Uh, I'll just clear that up. Let's uh, move that grain over there, and then uh, that'll free up an inventory slot. Now, over here, we should be seeing the stone building up faster than the wagon can move it, in which case we are safe to get a second wagon up and running that will be able to move the stone over to the general store. And we are going to start approaching that uh, 25 happiness mark. In fact, we may get there very, very soon. There we are, we're up to uh, 22. As long as we can keep uh, all of this moving through, then we should be okay. Fish is moving along quite nicely. The, uh, that is completely full. Honestly, we can probably uh, afford to have a, a second wagon working the fish route. Oh, we do not have the population to support. That's a bit of a shame. But what we are going to have is enough bricks to support upgrading the house. There we go. Now that is looking like a very fine house indeed. Look at that. It's got a whole expansion on the back, and it looks like, uh, well, it looks like stone tiles, but we'll we'll say they're slate tiles for now. But there we are. We've actually managed to crest the 25 mark, and as long as we uh, pick the right time to click on that, we've completed the end of tutorial. That's the end of the tutorial. Keep growing your town, completing research, optimizing, and automating. And indeed, we will. Now, we haven't reached uh, a point in this episode where we are free with our resources. That is that we're sustainably uh, harvesting grain and and wood but we will get there soon enough i assure you that'll be something to look forward to in the next episode but uh, we will get a second uh, second wagon working this route as well just to make sure our uh, people have plenty of delicious food but i think that's a wonderful place to wrap up this episode i really do hope you have enjoyed and will be joining me for the next uh, where we will be deciding on what new technology to begin and uh, indeed aiming with the second episode to get sustainable with at least the the basic building resources so wood and uh some some of uh some of the the crops grain at the very very least i hope you've enjoyed though i hope to see you in the next do let me know down below what you thought of the return to the series with a like or indeed a comment and i will see you next time but until then do take care <laughs>